One of the most used tools in my machine shop is probably the machinist hammer. It's usually a lot smaller than a regular hammer since it's used to tap in parts in a vise or a lathe chuck and it's something that I do a lot in a workshop. Now I made this one a few years ago and it's fine, it works great, but it isn't my greatest job. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and replace it with something that's a little bit nicer. Now the thing that I like about these projects is the design is really up to you. If you don't like the way that I do it, say you don't like the round head, you can always make it square or hex shaped. Point being, it's really up to you. Now I've gone ahead and modelled up the design, so let's get started. I'll start off by machining the head, since everything sort of bolts onto it. Now unfortunately, since it is the end of the year, I don't have a huge amount of metal on hand to work with. The square bar is really the right shape that I'm going for, but it is a bit big for the job. So what I might do is go ahead and mill down this off cut of round stock until it's the right shape. Now strictly speaking, this grade of steel isn't really what you'd normally use for a head of a hammer. It's low carbon, so it's a very drawn out process to go ahead and harden it. But since this is a machinist hammer, it will have replaceable faces which will screw into the head at each end. So it really doesn't matter too much what I make the head from. With the faces cleaned up and faced, I'll go ahead and drill a centre hole on each end. Normally I'd use the lathe and the Jacobs chuck, but I had it apart at the time, so this way was easier. Now the head will transition from a square to a circle at each end, so what I'll do is I'll set up the compound to cut a roughly 15 degree angle. With the tapers now cut at each end, I can now put it back in the milling machine and cut the holes for the faces and the handle. 
I know that there are better ways of attaching faces and handles in hammers over the threaded holes that I'm going to use, but it should be okay for a small light duty hammer like this. And that's the head done. Next I'll make the handle, and I'm looking to add a bit more weight to this one compared to the old one, which was a little bit light for the job. Now machining a long piece of steel like this one isn't really one of the lathe's strengths. Even with a live center, it does tend to chatter a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll take it easy, especially with the end that is sticking out away from the chuck. And the first thing I'll do is I'll turn down the threaded end, and once it's machined, I can then flip it around to machine the rest of the handle. With the handle now polished, I can then cut the threads, and in hindsight I should have spent the extra 15 minutes to single point cut them, because there is a small gap at the bottom, which I had to go in later, recut the threads on the lathe to make it flush. And so far I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I know some people do prefer to have a knurled handle over the polished one, but I think a polished handle looks a bit better. We can now start to make up the faces for the hammer, and there is a bit of choice in what material to use depending on what you intend to machine and what you have access to. The most common materials that I've seen are steel, nylon, acetyl, brass and bronze. To make the first face, I picked up a piece of 30mm nylon for about 15 bucks. I know this brand calls it Wearlon, but it is nylon. As far as plastics go, nylon is pretty durable, though of course it is going to wear out eventually. So what I did was I made two or three of these heads at the same time, so I can easily replace it in the future. And of course I'll use nylon for those very soft parts that I really don't want to mark. And that is the nylon head done, and it only took about 5 minutes to make. 
The next head that I'm going to make is going to be made from brass. Brass is a pretty soft metal and it doesn't spark. But making it was a bit more involved than the first one. I don't have a huge amount of brass or bronze on hand and what I do have is mostly offcuts from old projects. And I've been keeping those offcuts for a project such as this. Brass is pretty expensive and I don't want to throw it away so what I thought I might do is go ahead and cast it. I'll start by cutting off a piece of galvanised pipe which I'll then clean up in the lathe to remove the galvanising. I'll then weld it to a piece of sheet steel. I now have a simple metal mould which should be big enough for the hammer face. Next I'll use the forge to melt the brass and compared to other metals that I've melted I'll have to take a few more precautions. The big danger of melting brass is metal fume fever which you can get from any zinc fumes produced as you melt the brass. Brass being a copper and zinc alloy so as you melt it and get it up to temperature some of the zinc can boil off. So it's always recommended to do this away from people, have good ventilation, and wear a proper respirator. And after letting it cool, the part easily came out of the mould. It also produced some cool layered texture on the side, hopefully that doesn't mean anything in terms of the casting. And from here on out, the process of making it is much the same as it was before. Interestingly enough though, the cast brass cuts a lot better with this carbide tooling than it did before. Normally brass will grab this type of tooling and pull it into the work, but it isn't doing that here for some reason. I'm not sure if it's down to the fact that it's just cast, or if it's down to the fact that it lost some zinc in the process, but it machines a lot better than it did before. And that is the hammer done. It's definitely a huge upgrade compared to the old one, and overall I'm very happy with the project. And I think it's going to be one of those tools that I'm going to be using for many years to come. Obviously when you make your hammer, you can change as many things as you want, make it how you would like it. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this project. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.